right, everyone, we are going to begin six o'clock. So just glad that all you guys are here as we gather today to honor the Lord, to praise the Lord together, to take time on this weekend and should be, you know, and I believe that you are honoring God every day and looking to him every day and Acknowledging him as the source of our life, the foundation of our life. But then it says we come together corporately and we gather every Saturday night here at six o'clock to seek God together as a resort family. So, and, and friends, extended family. Um, so whoever is here tonight, I welcome you guys. I'm glad that you're here. I believe God has something planned for you tonight. It's always good when we get together and pray. The presence of the Holy Spirit is with us. We're going to pray. We're going to worship. We're going to seek God together. We're going to honor God together. And I know God has blessings for you. Amen. Amen. Are you guys thankful to be here? Are you glad God woke you up this morning? You got glad you got another day where you got breath in your lungs? We thank you for that, God. So my name is Pastor Dakota. I'm the associate pastor here. I'm just taking a second right now letting everybody get into the atmosphere we're going to begin to worship in a second uh, after I finish with some announcements but um, you know in the Bible it says we approach his gates with thanksgiving and with his courts with praise so as we begin to worship I just want us to begin to have an attitude and a posture that we're coming before God we're coming before the throne you know and that's a holy thing that's a holy moment that's a special moment um, but before we do that there was a couple things they wanted me to let you guys know so this is the last week before RISM will begin anybody in here graduated from RISM yeah come on yeah okay I'm an honorary RISM myself too um, but that's our ministry school that we do for nine months every year that's going to be beginning next week so this is the last week either if you would like to take an application and sign up if you've been thinking about that you can still sign up now you can go talk to will um about the applications will stand up raise your hand there's will right there so or if you need to turn in money will can accept the money for the tuition um so if you have anything in regard to rism go talk to will will actually is a rism alumni himself um so yeah and uh also the youth group Let's give it up for the youth group. Yeah, and for Geneva. Um, I think she's in a meeting right now. She was gonna do this announcement, but Geneva's gonna have a table out there. If you don't know, that's our youth pastor. Or maybe it might be right here. I see some food right there. That's probably what it is. There's gonna be a youth fundraiser after service. So. There's gonna be the uh, woman's retreat. Uh, Rebecca is having, is Rebecca Rodenace is leading a women's retreat that's gonna be in August on the weekend from August 16th to 18th. It has room for 12 people to sign up. This is gonna be a gathering in Mariposa and then they're gonna be hiking in Yosemite. So if you're interested and you wanna get together with other women, you wanna go up into the mountains for a weekend and have a retreat and do hiking and see Yosemite and everything, that sounds fun to me. I'm not going to be able to join though, but you can talk to Rebecca about that and you can sign up. She said there's only room for 12 women, so sign up as soon as you can if you would like to be a part of that. So I have another announcement. I just found out about this announcement today. Actually, one of my friends is here, Pastor Zosh. I know he doesn't like this for me to put him on the spot, but uh, you know, if you guys do know him, we honor him. We're thankful that Pastor Zosh is with us. He's 
done a lot of different partnerships. He, he's a member of the resort as well. Um, I, we told him that we were gonna give him an extra key so that he can come over here and come inside the building whenever he wants. But there's gonna be a missions festival. So I know we have a lot of students that just graduated from our mission school. If you're interested in learning more about missions and what's happening in local missions and global missions around Fresno or with people that are connected to Fresno, there's gonna be a festival at Fresno Pacific University. This happens every year. That's gonna be on the weekend, May 10th and May 11th. So that's coming up next month. That's gonna be a Friday and a Saturday all day. You can talk to Zosh if you would like to get more information for that, or you can talk to me about it as well. I'm gonna be there. Uh, I think I might actually be rapping. Maybe that was a rumor that I heard or doing some type of spoken word or something. So I'll let you guys know more information about that as well. But um, I'm excited for that. So let's just give a big hand to Jesus right now. Okay. Like I said, we're gonna begin to worship and uh, right before that, I'm just gonna read something from the Bible. So if you do have your Bibles, mostly probably you have it on your phone. I know it's dark in here, but I'm going to John chapter one. It's where I'm gonna be reading from. I'm not gonna start preaching. So if you, you don't need to go to your Bible there unless if you wanna look at it, cause I know it's dark, but, and I wanted to open with the word in John chapter one, verse 29. I got it right here on, on my phone. This is what it says. It says, so the gospel of John chapter one, verse 29. The next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, behold, the lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Are we thankful for that? Our sins are taken away by Jesus. We can put our faith in Jesus and believe he was the lamb that was slain, right? And the Bible said, him who knew no sin became sin upon my behalf that I might become the righteousness of God. That's a reason I, I should, I'm gonna start running around this building right now. I don't know about you, but the next day, John saw Jesus coming towards him and said, behold, the lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, after me comes a man who is per preferred before me for he was before me. I did not know him but that he should be revealed to Israel. Therefore, I came baptizing with water. I could start preaching, but I'm not. I'm just going to keep reading. And John bore witness saying, I saw the spirit descending from heaven like a dove and he remained upon him. He's talking about Jesus. I did not know him, but he who sent me to baptize with water said to me, upon whom you see the spirit descending and remaining on him, this is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I have seen and testified that this is the Son of God. See, so it's not just anybody. It's the Son of God, right? That's a big statement right there. And John said, God, God told him, the one whom you see, the Spirit descend like a dove and remain. This is the one. And I have seen and testified that this is the Son of God. Again, the next day, John stood with two of his disciples. And this is, I'm coming to the thought that I'm gonna share with you guys right now as we go into worship. And looking at Jesus as he walked, he said, behold, the Lamb of God. So John is there, two disciples are with him. Jesus is coming by and he looks and he says, behold, the Lamb of God. And as we worship, that's what we're doing right now. We're beholding the Lamb of God. It says when two or three are gathered together, he is in the midst of us and what a beautiful thing to look at right of all the beautiful things we can see in the world if you could behold the lamb of god you are going to see the most beautiful thing that your eyes could ever see the beauty of jesus the majesty of jesus right the king of kings and the lord of lords and it says the two disciples heard him speak and they followed jesus now this is interesting they had a teacher right john they were john's disciples but john points and says there's jesus now they stop they say well we're not going to be with john we're going to follow jesus because they were interested by that so they're following jesus and it says jesus turned back and seeing them following him see we just hear about these stories think they were really there they really saw him walking by that's that's pretty cool i mean beyond cool that's amazing right and Jesus looked back at them and said to them, what do you seek? Imagine being in that moment right there. 
you just heard this is the guy right the messiah the one that they've been saying is coming this is the son of god right and he says behold the lamb of god there he is so they're following him they're probably like oh we want to you know what would you what would you ask him right he's known already by this time of who he is and and then they're there and they say and they says who do, what do you seek what would you do if god looked at you and asked you that that's my thought that i'm telling you right now so you're following jesus right and jesus looks back at you and says what are you seeking What's the answer? What's your answer in your heart that you're going to say? Because I think there's a lot of things that we could say, right? And there's some that might be good. Some might not be good. I'm not trying to make anybody feel ashamed. That's not what I'm doing. I'm not trying to make you feel guilty. That's not what I'm doing. I don't want to be religious. I want to encourage you. But it shouldn't be, oh God, I want a new house. God, I want a new car. I mean, you could say those things. And now those are legitimate things. I would like a new house. I would like a new car. But of all the things that I could answer, if Jesus really was looking at me and said, what are you seeking when you come to me? See, now we're evaluating our heart. And that's what God, that just think about that. Why do you come to church? Why do you lift your hands? Why are we praising him right now? Are we praising him just because, you know, oh, I got all these bad things going on and I just needed to get fixed? Or am I praising him for who he is, right? Because he's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be praised. He alone is worthy of your attention, worthy of your praise, because people worship a lot of different things. But we were created to worship, but we were created to worship one thing. God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's what you were created to worship for. So Jesus is looking at you tonight, and he's saying, what are you seeking? It's interesting. Look at what they said. He invites them after, so I think they probably said the right answer. But they said to him, Rabbi, it says right here in my Bible in parentheses, which is to say when translated, teacher, where are you staying? We want to go where you're going. We want to spend time with you. Where are you going to be? We're seeking to spend time with you. We're seeking to be around you. We're seeking to be close with you. Where are you staying? And Jesus looks at them, and this is what he'll say to you too. He says, come and see. You want to know where I'm? You want to come spend time with me? Come and see then. And they, and they, they came and they saw where he was staying and they remained with him that day and now it was about the 10th hour see so this is the thing jesus looks and says what do you guys want and they didn't say oh i want a healing i want a miracle give me a miracle jesus heal me no they said where are you staying and he said come and see they said i just want to be with you i might need a new house i might need a new car i might need more money Andrew always jokes around you don't you never can get a new wife right that's wrong I'm sorry I shouldn't say that some people might want a, a new wife or a new husband but the Bible doesn't allow that so you guys got to get your heart with God right in that one but I'm saying we got all these different things right and this is serious we should not have other things that we are putting above just being with Jesus right everything else will fall into its place and so i'm done now i know i said i wasn't gonna preach but that was my thought matthew 6 33 says seek first the kingdom of heaven and all these other things would be added to you seek first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness how do you get his righteousness when you get christ when you say i want to follow him that's what i want where are you gonna be at jesus where are you staying? Because I want to stay with you. Wherever you're staying, I want to stay with you. And this is the thing. If you're coming tonight with a pure heart before God and you want to stay with him, he's standing there saying, come to me, come to me, come to me, come to me. Because he loves you and he wants you to seek him. He wants you. He wants you to go to him more than you want to find him. You may not believe that. You might think, oh, I'm not worthy. Oh, I'm guilty. Oh, I, I messed up. I got all these problems. But God is saying, come and spend time with me. And as you're spending time with him, he will make you better from the inside out of all of those things that you're dealing with. Amen? Amen. Okay, come on. Stand up to your feet. We're going to worship God right now. If you would like, you don't have to. But if you want to stand up to your feet, you can. If you want to sit down, you can. Whatever. I know at the resort, we get excited, right? We're, we, we, we lift up our hands. So if you can, just lift up your hands right now with me. Jesus, we magnify you. Jesus, we honor you. 
We want to be where you are, God. That's, that's what we're saying from our heart. Where are you, Lord? And it says you're not far, that you are near. It says when we draw near to you, you draw near to us. It says that if we seek you with all of our heart, that we would find you. It says right now, when two or three are gathered together in your name, that you are in the midst of us. I thank you that you're here, Holy Spirit. I invite your presence right now to come and do what only you can do. Minister to people's hearts right now. Minister to our minds right now. Bring your freedom. It said where the Spirit of God is, there is liberty. I declare that liberty in this room in Jesus' name. I thank you that yokes are broken because of the anointing in Jesus' name. So I thank you, God. I thank you that your anointing is here. We thank you, God, that you woke us up today. We thank you that we are alive right now. We thank you that we can worship you with our mouth and with our hearts and with our soul. And so we just praise you, God. We praise you, God. We approach your courts with the, your gates with thanksgiving and your courts with praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Glory 
Why we worship 
universe, we bless you, God, that you are the one and only true and living God. Hallelujah. We bless you. You reign, King Jesus. Hallelujah. You reign, King Jesus. We glorify you in this house tonight. We bless you for your rulership in our hearts. We bless you that you reign over our minds. You reign over our hearts. You reign over our lives. You reign over every situation. You are a sovereign king. And we bless you for your sovereignty, Lord. You're worthy. you guys to take a moment and just think about every situation in your life where King Jesus showed up and reminded you that he reigned over your situation whatever that looks like for you he's a God that shows up he's a God that's on time he's a God that's tried and true he's a God that's worthy yes he is he's worthy God, we bless you for your worthiness. Yeah, he's a God that's reliable. God, we bless you that you are reliable, God. You can be counted on, Lord. We give you glory. There is no other, Lord. There is no other. situation and every circumstance to you tonight we give you our undivided attention tonight God we open our hearts to you tonight father we give you permission to come in and wreck us God however you so desire oh God you come in and you do what only you can do in this house tonight God and not this physical house God but this house God we give you permission to do whatever you want to do in this house tonight father You reign, God.
supernatural, you still reign, King Jesus. Yes, Jesus. I don't know who this is for, but it doesn't matter what they said about you. He still reigns. He reigns over your identity. reigns over slander in the name of Jesus. He reigns over every rumor in the name of Jesus. God, he reigns over every lie. He's greater. He's bigger. He's better. He's the power.
about our hearts. We have a high priest who is praying for us. We have a high priest. Oh God, we bless you. We thank you that you are a high priest, King Jesus. You're worthy of all of us. Can y'all just lift your hands to Jesus? He's here, he's here, he's here. Hey, Juan, I know that we have a set and whatnot, but I said this last week, and I'm trying to get out of here, and I just keep feeling this over and over and over, that Yahweh is sending another blood movement to the earth. Yahweh is just going to just clean up and revitalize, and he's just going to refresh and send a renaissance nature back to his bride. How many y'all ready for refreshing through the blood of Jesus? That Yahweh, we're just we're just ready for your blood, Yahweh. I'm telling you, he's doing something that, with his blood that he's not just he's not just bringing man to repentance, but he's actually destroying all the enemies of the children of Yahweh that are oppressing us and chasing us. And so Yahweh, we just bless your blood. So can you just stand to your feet? And we're just going to sing that song again that how beautiful his blood is. Cause I just think that as we just uplift the blood of Jesus, every demon in hell just starts to trem tremble at his name. So Yahweh, we just say thank you for who you are. Yahweh God, I say thank you that you begin to oppress our oppressors. Yahweh God, I say thank you that you begin to just torment the tormentors that are coming after us, Yahweh God. I thank you that your blood just drowns every sickness, every disease. God, we just say thank you for how beautiful your blood is, Yahweh God. It's so beautiful and it's so good, Yahweh God. Father, we thank you for a revival of your blood, Yahweh God. Come on, if you're thankful for his blood, just lift your hands and let's just sing this to him. How beautiful, Yahweh, you are.
God, we thank you for the power of your blood. We believe there's power in the blood of Jesus. We know that you're alive today. That yes, you died on a cross, but you rose on the third day. Now you're ascended and you're seated in heaven at the right hand of God. That's where you are, Jesus, and you will rule and reign forever, Lord. I thank you for the power of that blood. I thank you that it saves souls. I thank you that today is the day of salvation. I thank you that people are encountering you right now all across this world, Lord. In every continent, God, people are being affected by your blood, saved by your blood. There's a harvest, God, in Africa, in Asia, in Europe, God, in Australia, Lord, in North America, South America, in every country, God, in the Middle East, in China. There's nothing that can separate people from the love of God and from the blood of Jesus. Just like what we sing, there is power in the blood of Jesus to break every chain. God, I plead your blood right now over lost souls. God, I pray that those people that don't know you, that they would come to know you, God. That they would experience who you are, Jesus Christ, and that they would discover salvation and a relationship with you, that you would become their Lord, that you would become their Savior. God, I pray that that is happening here in Fresno, that your blood is working in every church in Fresno, but not just that, in the streets of this city, every side of town, the north side, the south side, the east side, the west side, at our jobs, in our families, in our communities, at the grocery store, at the Starbucks, at the gym, everywhere that we go where there's lost souls. I pray for a harvest. I thank you that your blood, God, it says in your word that you would wish that none would perish, but that all would come to repentance. John 3, 16, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever would believe in him would not perish, but would have everlasting life. Jesus, I thank you that you died for us. I thank you that you died for the whole world, that no sinner is too bad, that no person is too wicked. There's no such thing that your blood is greater than that, that right now your blood is speaking a better word, that mercy triumphs over judgment, that where there's sin, that grace abounds even more. So I plead your blood over this city. I plead your blood over this valley. I plead your blood over this state of California. It doesn't matter what we see on the news. The blood of Jesus is more powerful than the news. The news is the good news. Christ died for us so that we could receive not just eternity forever in heaven, but even a life with God now. I thank you that that blood, the power of that blood is still at work today. In Jesus' name, I plead it over our families. I plead it over our children. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So we just plead the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood, Rashe, the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood. We plead the blood right now over our households, God. We plead the blood of Jesus right now over every daycare center. Yes, we plead the blood of Jesus over every kindergarten, every elementary school, every middle school. We plead the blood of Jesus. Every high school, we plead the blood of Jesus. Every college and university, we plead the blood of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus right now over the arts and the entertainment industry. Hallelujah. We plead the blood of Jesus over our military right now. Oh God, we plead the blood, the blood, the blood right now. Hallelujah. Lord, we plead the blood of Jesus over our over um, Fresno City Police. Clovis, Clovis City Police, we plead the blood of Jesus. Yes, God, we plead the blood of Jesus over every hospital, over the medical industry in general. We plead the blood of Jesus right now. Hallelujah. Jesus. Yes, God, we bless you for the blood, God. We bless you for the blood that cleanses us, God. The blood that washes us white as snow, God. We bless you, King Jesus. 
Hey, God. We bless you, Lord. Father, I just pray right now. I, I pray for all those people. And, and we see it, you know, all the time in this city, but it's it's all across the whole United States. It's, it's all up and down California. And it's part of my testimony. I, I pray for people that are bound to drugs right now. People that are addicted to whatever drugs that is, whether it be methamphetamine, heroin, uh, Suboxone, or any other type of drug, you know, cocaine alcohol even cigarettes you know whatever it is that they don't have control over that they need freedom from god uh um fentanyl lord there's people dying from fentanyl all around us but that you have freedom god just like how you set me free i pray that you can set them free god that they could be free from addiction to drugs that they might, they might, people might look at them and say, oh, they're just an addict. No, they're a treasure in your kingdom and you made them with a plan and a purpose. They are not a drug addict. They are a son and daughter of the most high God. So I plead your blood over them right now. I plead the blood of Jesus over every person that's hooked on meth in this city. I plead the blood of Jesus right now over everybody that's in prison, over everybody that's in jail, and even the people that are dying right now from violence, from shooting in this community, those that are, maybe they're involved in gangs. God, I pray that here in Fresno, people will not die, but they would live. And we plead your blood, God, over the gangs, over the shooting, over the death. We, we speak life over Fresno. That the blood of Jesus will triumph here. And the people would come out of darkness and into marvelous light. God, we thank you for the power of that blood right now. We declare it over every part of this city, Lord, in Jesus' name. Beautiful. Come on, keep singing about the blood. Thank them for the blood. Keep praying. If God puts something on your heart, not just listen to us pray, you pray. And plead the blood of Jesus. Say the names of the people that need those prayers right now.
come on, it's the King of glory rescued me. It's the King of glory rescued me. Come on, shout it out. It's the King of glory rescued me. It's the King of glory. Come on to our community season. It's the King of glory. Come on, shout it out, shout it out. King of glory. Come on, shout it like you're proud. It's the King of glory. Come on, do you believe?
praise. Come on, just lift up your praise. Come on, don't Come let on, guys. Praise I know y'all can be louder than that. I'm pretty sure it's a lot of people in here that's done been rescued praise. out of a whole lot of stuff. It's kind of quiet up in here tonight for people that's been rescued on, by the rescuer. Come on, y'all. Lift Come your voices up to the King of Kings He's and the Lord of Lords Lord. because I'm pretty sure somebody in this house done been rescued He's from worthy. something. He's Come on worthy. now. Yeah. He's worthy. He's worthy. Yes, he You've been is. rescued from death. He's worthy. Worthy, worthy, worthy. Worthy, worthy, Jesus. Father, we bless you for being a rescuer. bless you for being a chain breaker. Yes, God. Some of us got rescued from death. Some of us didn't get into that car accident. Some of us didn't get shot. Some of us didn't overdose. Some of us didn't lose our mind. God, we bless you that you keep our mind, God. Come on, y'all. Worthy. He's a redeemer. Hallelujah. Act like he rescued you from something. Oh God, you lifted us from the flames of hell. We give you glory. but I can think of a lot of things that the Lord has rescued me from. I can even remember a time where the Lord specifically spoke to me and he took me back to a time in my life where I didn't know who he was and if I had to die that day, I definitely wouldn't have went to heaven. And he specifically told me that I would have died that day. And maybe some people don't know this. I'm, I'm going to just share a quick little story. I, I was in a fight. It was a physical fight in a parking lot. And I can remember I was so focused on my target that I didn't see the guy that was to my right. He was probably about seven feet away from me. I didn't see him, but I heard somebody say, don't try it. And when I looked up, I realized that he was waiting for the right moment to hit me. He was gonna catch me off guard and I can just remember being in my room years and years later and I was just spending time with the Lord and I was just, you know, thinking about all of the things that he had rescued me from. And the Lord specifically showed me that day and he said, if he would have hit you, he would have hit you just right in your temple and he would have took your life. And it just brought tears to my eyes because guys, think about it. How many times have we been so close to death and we don't even know it? Oh, now he's a rescuer in this house God we give you glory God that you have saved us you have redeemed us God you kept us from death God we thank you that because of your death we get to live God we don't take that lightly we give you honor in this house King Jesus so I'm gonna challenge you guys love Jesus, stand to your feet for me, please. And I'm going to give y'all a couple of minutes. And I want y'all to get out of your seat. And I want you to find two or three people and I want you to share with them something that the Lord redeemed you from. Go ahead. Step out of your seat. Find somebody you don't know and share something with them that the Lord redeemed you from. Testify.
Because the devil don't like this. Father, we give you glory. You're such a redeeming God. Hallelujah. And when you get done testifying about the things that you've been redeemed from, lift your voice as we go back into this song.
for you are the glorious you are Christ my come on keep singing that how beautiful you beautiful are beautiful you are oh merciful you are the glorious you are Christ my Savior the beautiful you are the merciful you are the glorious you are come on never get tired of singing about his blood how beautiful your blood was Yahweh that you would spill it out for a people like us Yahweh God that the angels would stand back and say what is man that thou art mindful of him Yahweh that your beautiful blood would heal us that it would free us Jesus
his blood speaks a better word. I want you to write some things down and I'm actually going to invite a couple of you people back up here just to pray us into something. I just feel like there's an oil to so just prayer and to break and just, God, we just say thank you for your breakers anointing in the room right now. Geneva, I'm going to have you come on up here. Adam, I'm going to have you come up here. Dakota, come on up here. Brother Zosh, if Brother Zosh is still here, come on up here, Brother Zosh. Can we just sing that over them? You're never going to let us down. Come on, his blood is never going to let you down. God, we just come against that lie of the enemy that you're going to let us down, Father. Come on, he's a good, good father. A good, good father. He didn't go to the cross just to let you down now. Come on, as you sing that, just watch your situation unfold into the beautiful promise that he gave you.
of yourself. Lord, you're never going to let me down. You're too good to let us down. You're too, too good to let us down. So we speak to every spirit of doubt and we say go right now in Jesus' name. Every spirit of unbelief, go right now in the name of Jesus. And Holy Spirit, we ask for the faith of Jesus right now to just flood our hearts and flood our bodies, Yahweh God. We ask for an assurance and a belief in the Father that he doesn't just make promises to us, God, but he has the power to perform everything that he said to us because he's a good, good father. He's a good, good father. And your blood sealed it for us. Wow. Come on, give the Lord a round of applause if you believe he's gonna perform everything that he promised you. Oh, come on, you can do better for the King of Kings than that right there, God. We believe it, 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 Yahweh God. Geneva, come on over here, would you? Where's Dax? I want him to pray too, wherever he disappeared too. Guys, I want you to take out your phones real quick, just write this down. I was standing in the back and did my absolute best to just get out of the way tonight and I just really wanted our team to run it I told Geneva man Geneva way to hear the Lord can y'all just give a round of applause for how the Lord is just speaking through my friend up here like she just love it love it love it love it love it so I'm gonna get out of your way too here in a minute and y'all can keep this boat going there, there's just a few things that I want you to understand about the blood because I said I said something at the beginning of the week that he's sending a move of his blood. Tell your neighbor, there's a move of his blood happening. Come on, tell somebody around you, there's a move of his blood happening. Alex, turn this up just a little bit, would you? There's a move of his blood happening, and, and there's a couple different things that I wanna make sure that we understand that the blood did outside of just saving us. That if we're not careful, we'll make Calvary all about salvation, and we'll miss a lot of the jewels that came with the blood of Jesus, amen? Brother Zosh, for all of y'all who don't know, this is Brother Zosh right here. He is a general in the earth. So for those guys who do or demand on him, can you give him a round of applause, please? Because it's just, I love having him in the house with us. He is so much more smarter than I am. So Brother Zosh, you can clean up anything that I say wrong right now. <laughs> awesome. The blood of Jesus does a few different things, and I'm, I'm really excited about this because when Yahweh began to share that he's sending his blood again and he's washing us in his blood, I immediately, like so many other people, begin to think of salvation, that of course it's the blood of Jesus that saves us and Holy Spirit in his mercy and in his grace begin to say, Andrew, it is so much more than just about salvation. And I begin, we're not gonna go here for time's sake because I really just wanna stay in this atmosphere of prayer that's happening right now that in this atmosphere, listen, whenever the Holy Spirit begins to dominate and flood an atmosphere that is not the time to soak that's the time to decree declare and actually release our authority into the atmosphere and angels go out on our behalf to bring to pass the will of the lord but he needs you hit your neighbor and say he needs you he needs you to put his word into the atmosphere and when you put his word into the atmosphere it begins to go to work and the angels begin to go to battle on our behalf in the heavenlies and i'm so thankful that we get to partner with jesus how about you Brother Zosh, I've been telling leaders all over Fresno, we have to stop saying we need to move out of the way because Jesus did not die so we could move out of the way. Jesus died so we could partner with him and stand in the way of all the works of the enemy and that we could be the wall that there isn't a devil in hell that can take on nor overtake what Yahweh's doing in Fresno, Clovis, California, America. Amen. Come on. We are so much more stronger with Christ Jesus than we are without him. Amen. And I'm, I'm, man. So I want, I want you to write this down. One, the blood heals you. Come on, say the blood heals me. Say it again. The blood heals me. Write this down. The blood, and we're going to go through this over the next couple Wednesdays. The blood delivers me. 
I haven't even gotten to salvation yet because you have to remember something, church, and I'm really just going to park my hat here that he was tied, Brother Zosh, he was tied to a whipping post before he hung on a cross. Oh, my God. There's something that we were learning, Brother Zosh, in theology called the law of first mention. That whatever's mentioned first was the primary thought there. And I began to look at why doesn't anybody put as strong as an emphasis on him tied to the whipping post as much as we do him tied to the cross. You want to know what I think really tied him to the cross and tied him to the whipping post? His love for me and for you. Oh, come on now. It's his love for me and for you that bound him to that cross that they said, why don't you come down from here? And what superseded his will was his love for you and I. Anybody thankful that he didn't jump off the cross and that he didn't jump off the whipping post? And we have to remember something. The same day that he was tied to a cross was the same afternoon that he was tied to a whipping post. Amen? And, and, I, and I think that what you always coming to do first is, you can write this down, I believe he's going to send a wave of healing that's going to turn the medical community around, that's going to make them say, you know what, we're smart, but he's smarter. You know what, we can fix the body, but he builds bodies. And I just love that Yahweh, in the mixing and in the cleansing of his blood over our bodies, we're going to begin to see body parts rebuilt. Come on, how many are all ready for that? That we don't have to fly, Brother Zosh, 10,000 miles away to see that. That we should see that right here in Fresno. Anybody besides me ready for that? Come on, where you get a cancer report where it says you're dying in T-minus this day. But then you hold that thing up and say, you know what? The blood speaks a better word than what this report. Come on, is anybody excited that his blood is going to come heal the body, the bride, the ecclesia on a whole nother precedent that we've ever seen before? Come on, shout, his blood heals. And, and, and that one just bothers me. Because you know what turns the bride away from Jesus? Disappointment in power. And I said, God, what's going on? And he said, because my people have a lack of knowledge in the blood, we keep, he, we, we as the people of God, keep asking Yahweh to do something that's already finished. Shout, it's finished. Come on, shout, it's finished. How many of y'all believe you're saved when you accept Jesus as your Lord and your Savior? Huh? And you'll never get talked out of that. You'll never doubt that. There isn't anybody who can shake that. But why is it so easy for the enemy to talk us out of our healing when healing to the post came before he was tied to a cross? I want to have as much of a belief in his healing power for me I can't see not a heaven I can't see not a God I can't see angels I can't know God you know what all that is very challenging but you know what's not challenging I can feel the boil in my skin Yahweh God I can feel the pain in my body Yahweh God I can see the report right in front of me and you know what Yahweh you can save me from a hell I can't see surely you can heal my body of this disease does anybody believe that come on he's gonna come heal us on a whole nother level this year Come on, shout, the blood heals. The blood delivers. I like this, write this down, Romans chapter eight. It's one of my favorite things out of the passion. I'm just gonna read it to you real quick. This is so gnarly. Watch this, watch this. Lately in the morning, I've been opening my Bible up to Romans 8 out of the Passion and just reading the very first sentence, and it reads like this. So now the case is closed. Come on, tell your neighbor, the case against you is closed. Come on, tell me again, the case against you is closed. Watch this. There remains no accusing voice against you. Ready, write this down. The blood silences all your accusers. Oh my God, my God, my God, my God. The blood silences all of your accusers. I heard Geneva say this earlier. She said, is there anybody thankful that, and can you give God a praise if God forgave and was merciful to anybody in this room? 
Come on, has the Lord been merciful to anybody in this room? Has the Lord silenced any accusers against you? Shout, it's the blood. You know what we need, Ernie, in the church? We need a revelation of Calvary. We need a revelation of his blood. I say it like this to a lot of my leaders sometimes. He could have spilled, Brother Zosh, he could have spilled as the holy, just sovereign God, he could have spilled one drop of blood and it would suffice for all of humanity. He did not have to rip himself open, drain himself of everything that he was for it to pay the price. One prick of a holy God's finger and one drop of blood would have been suffice for every human being that'll ever walk the planet. So when I read this and I say, now the case is closed, Come on, because how many of y'all know the enemy will work against you for the sin that you've committed in your life? Come on, anybody who's been working your minds and try to make you feel just so, just so conde condemned and just so shameful, hit your neighbor and say, but the blood forgives you. You see why we need a revelation of his blood? Church, do you see why we need a revelation of his blood? And, and, it, and it brought me, this is the last thing I'm going to say, and it brought me to the story of the Israelites. They, they took a lamb and they, they cut it open and they dipped some flowers and whatnot in the blood of it and they just began to wipe it over the doorpost. Y'all remember this story? And the death angel would come and it would skip over the house of those who had the blood. Say the blood. And if there's any study that I think you should go do right now, it's the blood of Jesus. How many of y'all want to be healed? Study the blood. How many of y'all want to be delivered of yourselves? Study the blood. How many of y'all want to be delivered from people and their opinions? Study the blood. Because when the blood frees you, it frees you from the bondage of man. Hello? I don't know about you, I'm so glad I'm free from everybody's opinions. As long as I know his opinion about me, it doesn't matter who comes, who goes, it doesn't matter what your opinion is about me. What matters is every day I open my eyes, I hear him say, how you doing, love? And I say, Lord, I love you. And he says, and I love you. And I say, okay, God, what do you want to do today? And it doesn't matter who's in our lives and who's out of our lives. And it doesn't matter what enemy, the sickness or disease tries to throw at us. What matters is the knowledge of his blood makes me fully accepted into a house where I can have everything that I have need of. How many of y'all ready for a life like that? Come on, shout, it's his blood. So, so they dip the, the doohickey in the stuff and they wiped it over the doorpost and the death angel came and it passed over. And we all know that story. And, and they were saved, Brother Zosh, but, but that's, not what, that's not what intrigued me. What intrigued me was not that the death angel passed over them, but that it actually went and attacked their enemies. And, and then, and then we see a residue. Everybody say residue. We see a residue of the enemy. Has anybody ever gotten saved and it's like God fixed everything and then your body's starting to get healed and you're getting excited and then all of a sudden, it's like all hell breaks loose and you're like, God, I thought you healed me. I thought you fixed me. I'm seeing a residue of the enemy that I used to battle. Anybody? Huh? And what happens is the Pharaoh calls in Moses and he says, hey, grab your people and get out because your God has already destroyed everything. It took all of our, just get out of here. Listen, the Lord did not give up his blood so the enemy can stop bothering you. The Lord spilled his blood so he could save you while he destroys your enemies. So, 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 so they get their stuff and a million plus people go on a march and go on a walk. That's a lot of people. I think it was more than that. It was a lot of people leaving Egypt. It would have took a very long time. Tell your neighbor, 
God is not worried about the time limit. Some of us get so bent out of shape because things aren't moving fast enough instead of praising him that we're on our way out. Oh, they're asleep over here. How much have you here? Some of us get so mad at God for things not moving fast enough instead of praising him that we're on our way out of the situation. What happened, Andrew? Well, I checked the lump the other day and it went down a little bit. Praise God! Not that I'm gonna get upset that it's not gone, Brother Zosh. We're, we're gonna praise Him because of the breadcrumbs. Because you know what, Lord? If you don't wanna deliver me the whole loaf, I will honor you with the small things. And, and you know what, in my understanding, a baby step forward is no different than an adult step forward because it's in the right direction. And I would rather be going in the right direction an inch at a time than in the wrong direction or standing still. I can't stand to run with people like that. He's moving you forward, but you're complaining it's not fast enough. What if, what if the degree and the propelling of that speed is contingent on your continual praise just that he's bringing you out. My gosh. <laughs> I know a story of, a, of, a, of an apostle. He was baptizing a eunuch and when he was baptizing a eunuch the eunuch came up out of the water and the apostle was in a whole nother town immediately just because he was doing what God said for him to do so I'm gonna say it again what if the speed factor is really a praise and an obedience factor what if God thank you Lord, what if God is only moving as fast as your obedience How many of y'all know God can move immediately? Huh? But I've learned something about Yahweh God. Yahweh God wants you to move according to understanding, not according to His speed. I'm going to say that again. Yahweh doesn't want you to move according to His speed. Yahweh wants you to move according to understanding. So He will keep us in a place, Brother Zosh, longer than we're supposed to, just so we can get understanding. So when we get to the place that He's intended us to be, we will know why we're there. So I, what I begin to do in my own personal life is say, Lord, if I find myself in a holding pattern, if I find myself that things are taking longer or I'm getting frustrated or, or why is this still happening, God? I, I stop looking at that and I start looking internally and I begin to say, Lord, what's wrong with me, not what's going on here? And some of us need to take change that prayer life it, it needs to start saying God not what are you doing Lord what are you trying to do in me because it's your mercy say mercy come on say mercy it's his mercy that he doesn't move according to your speed or your time limit prove it glad you asked Mary and Martha Mary and Martha sent a servant said, Lord, your friend is dying. Tell your neighbor, God will not be manipulated. <laughs> Come on, tell me again. God will not be manipulated. Lord, the one whom you love, your friend, he's dying. He's lying sick and he's going to die if you don't get here. And God said, great, I'll wait two more days just to give you an understanding that your time limit and your situation and your problem is not as big as you think it is. He's bigger. He's bigger. He's bigger. No, I know that's hard for us to, because we're going through it and we're the one that's dying and we're the one. No, 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 no. He is bigger than anything that we're facing. Amen. 
and and when we can when we can hold on to that Lazarus will come forth I'm gonna say that again Lazarus will come forth when we are not shaken by the winds of the enemy y'all listen Yahweh wants our faith to be unshakable amen how many of y'all after that? I want a faith that's not shaken, not moved. I don't, I don't want, listen, this is a dangerous prayer. I don't want Yahweh to answer me with a faith that's moved with every circumstance. I want Yahweh to move on my behalf because my faith is uncorruptible. How many of y'all want that? Like, Lord, don't answer my prayer if my faith is not secure in you. Because, watch this, because then I will attribute the manifestation to someone or something other than you. Man. There's a prayer I used to say quite often. <laughs> mm. It's funny how there's like these little mantras or these little prayers that they sound good and they sound cute when you first begin to say them but then the the longer you walk with Christ the more you begin to see on Christ this solid rock I will stand for all other ground is sinking sand and, and it begins like this I dare not trust the sweetest sound Whew. come on how many y'all want that like Lord teach me to lean on you and you alone And so, and so they told Moses, get all your people, get out of here, and it's taking forever. And, and they go on this journey that's supposed to be 11 days, and they get to this, they get to this big sea that's in front of them. And, 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 and they're wondering, like, how are we going to cross? Write this down. The blood will give you wisdom. How many of y'all want wisdom? The blood will give you wisdom. Shout wisdom. And so they're like, Lord, how are we going to get across? They begin to complain to Moses, you brought us out here to die. And then all of a sudden, watch this, all of a sudden, Pharaoh and his army are behind the people of God. And I just want to prophesy this to everybody in this room and everybody watching by the live. When you find yourself in an impossible situation, that is when you praise him. That is when you thank him. That is when you remember that he's the God that makes a way where there seems to be no way. Come on, is there anybody in an impossible situation? Okay, just me. Is there anybody who's facing like, Lord, if you don't do it and you don't show up, God, and I don't have your glory and I don't have your goodness and I don't have your favor, it's not gonna happen. Anybody? Yay. Listen. That is not the time to shrink back. Write this down. That's the time to expect the impossible from God. And I love it because God gave him the wisdom. He put the staff in the water, and I don't got time for that, but he put the staff in the water, the things stand up, and they begin to march through it. And Brother Zosh, this is what I love. Ooh, we're in a Pentecostal church originally, and I'm going to run around this joker right now, I promise you. We're going to climb that pole right there, bro, and monkey bars this stuff up here. <laughs> this stuff makes me so excited. Y'all ready for this? Janae, but this is nuts. God opened up an impossibility for them you ready and the devil thought i can walk through their miracle of their impossibility with them he overplayed his hand again because the goodness of god is not meant for the enemy not meant for the devil it's not meant for demons and spirits it is only meant for the children of god and when they thought we can follow them right through their miracle all of a sudden the water came crashing in and drowned the enemies of god but wait 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 you got to ask yourself what made them pursue what 
made Egypt pursue. It was the death, or I'm going to say it like this. It was the lack of the blood on them. And, my God. and when there's a lack of the blood, I can feel this right here behind my head, Brother Zosh. Like I can just feel that anointing of the Lord. Like When the Lord comes to seek out His blood, His blood for those who are smeared in it, shout, I'm smeared in it. Oh, come on, shout, I'm smeared in your blood, Lord. When the angel of the Lord comes to find the blood, Brother Zosh, the response of the angel is to make miracles happen. And when the angel doesn't find the blood, its next reaction is to destroy anybody that doesn't have it. Listen, I'm going to tell you again. How many of y'all have the blood of Jesus smeared all over you? So you should give him the loudest praise because he's about to destroy every Egyptian, every enemy trying to follow. Oh, come on. Every enemy trying to follow you into your promise. And you're looking back there and you don't need to look back there. Just keep moving forward because the glory of God, the blood of God is about to crash and destroy all your enemies. It's the blood. Sing that one. It's the blood. It's the blood. It's the blood. Oh, how beautiful. How beautiful, God. Oh. Come on, if you just wanted God to destroy your enemies, just stand to your feet. Oh. Come on, just begin to tell them, Lord, send the blood. Send the blood, God. doesn't just make us white as wool Yahweh but your blood goes on the attack of all the enemies of hell <laughs> every arrow from hell gets destroyed by your blood every witch every warlock every spell every incant incantation Lord it all gets destroyed by your blood every cancer, every tumor, every disease with a name and without a name, Yahweh, destroyed by your blood, Yahweh. <laughs> Come on, ask him, give me a revelation of your blood, Yahweh. I need a revelation of your blood, King Jesus. I need a revelation of your blood, King Jesus. I'm walking in my victory. It might be a small step, but I'm walking in my promise. It might be a small change, but I'm walking in my promise. Tell three people around you.
Come on, give the Lord a shout and amen if you're ready for the, the King's blood to come fight on our behalf. How many all ready for the King's blood to come fight on our behalf? Wow. Listen, this is what we're going to do, and, and we're going to break up into groups and all that. And Geneva, come on close, Brother Zosh. Adam. Brother Zosh, before we start releasing and praying, is there anything just boiling on your heart with this, with the blood? Is, is the Lord stirring anything inside of you regarding his blood? Thank you, my pastor. I, I just thank God I, I came here because uh, I, I, need, I need God's grace. We have the mission festival coming, and there are a lot of things that need to be, to be uh, done. And uh, I told my wife, Lord, the Lord is putting in my heart to just wander. But I'm going to wander uh, to that corner of, uh, of Ashland and uh, winery. I think that's where I'm gonna stop, and I'm I'm glad that I came because since I came here, everything that uh, I've been liking for the mission festival next month, I think that not I think that I don't know, I have it uh, because of the blood of Jesus Christ. I want to thank you so much, Pastor, for uh, uh, helping me to know that I must move forward and not 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 wander, not, and my eyes must be fixed on Jesus Christ. I will shed his blood on the cross for his glory. And I, I like also the fact that um, uh, when he does it, all the glory goes to him. And, uh, you made it clear to me. I, I just want to thank God for that. My burdens is completely gone. Thank you so much. Awesome. Come on, how many of y'all excited that Yahweh could just give us a revelation like that? You know what, Lord, everything we have need of is found in your blood. Come on, tell somebody around you, it's not that difficult. Listen, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna have these guys up here praying just the blood over our church, over churches in Fresno, over the valley, over schools, over our government. How many of y'all ready to watch the blood of Jesus just to totally annihilate and turn around our government, amen? Super excited for that. But this is what I want you to do. I just want you to get with groups just right there where you're at. This is how we're gonna end tonight. We're just gonna release the worship team, just go wherever they like tonight. But I'm just gonna have, as they're praying up here, just get in little groups right there with three or four people, would you? And let's just start declaring the blood. Come on, just start declaring the blood over the education system. Begin to declare the blood over their bodies right there. Some of those people in your circle, they might need healing right now. They need the healing power of the blood of Jesus right there. And just start declaring that over them. Start declaring the blood of Jesus over Fresno, over Clovis, over Kerman, over Madera, over Kingsburg. Come on, all the way down to Manteca, all the way down to Orange Cove, all the way down to Los Angeles and Bakersfield. Yahweh, totally wash San Francisco in your blood, Yahweh God. Woo, come on, pray, pray, pray. Pray the blood of Jesus over them.
for the anointing and the power behind your death, Lord God. The resurrection, Lord Father God. God, I pray, Father God, I plead the blood over the death of, of our bodies, Lord God, over our flesh, over our own desires, Father God, and we are renewed, Lord, that we are cleansed, Father God, that we are rebirthed, Father God. God, I pray you give us wisdom and understanding, Father God, into this, this new realm, this new this physical body, Father God, you're going to place us in, Lord God. God, to fight, Father God. Lord God, I thank you, Father God. I ask revelation, Father God, spiritually, Lord God, over our minds, Lord God. That, Lord God, you just take us to a deeper place, Father God. That we take time, Lord God, to spend with you, Lord God. That, that right now you download, Father God, what's going on in our, that, that's taking, Father God, from you, Lord God. The things that we need to let go, maybe the people that we need to let go, Lord God. To give you more time, Lord God. God, I pray over all the hospitals right now, Lord God over the doctors, over the nurses, God. I plead the blood over them that, Father God, that you, that, that, Father God, that you speak to them, Lord God, and they're able to recognize and hear your voice right now, Lord God. God, and to trust in you and, and to, to lift you up, Father God, and instead of focusing on their career and their own abilities, Father God, that they're relying on you, Lord God. That you use, Father God. God, I come against any kind of uh, gang stalking, Father God, any addictions, Lord God. I plead the blood over your children in this building right now and on life. Any kind of harassment, any kind of bullying, Father God, from the enemy. We break that. And, and that, Father God, that that wave, Lord God. Lord, that that stat that and open the waters, Lord. The water comes crashing down, Father God, on those Pharisees, Lord God. And in those demonic activity and demonic realms and spirits, witchcraft and warlocks, Father God, that they are destroyed right now in the name of Jesus. Father God, and with that we stand strong, Lord God. That, that, that our faith is strong. Renew our faith right now, God. I plead the blood over our minds right now and over our hearts, Lord God. And that we stand up, stand up, Lord God. And we stand on that solid rock, Lord. That everything around us sinks, Father God. But that your foundation, Lord God, stands strong, Lord God. That we become pillars, Lord God. Lord God, I plead the blood, the blood over, Father God, all the the band, Lord God, the, the worship team, Lord God. I thank you for the worship team, Lord God. Over, I pray over them and their families, Lord. I thank you for all the staff, Father God, and, and, and all the volunteers, Father God, for the children's ministry, the media, Father God, the youth, Lord God. I pray over all the children, God, but I plead the, I plead the blood over all the staff and all the leaders, Father God. I pray over Dakota, Pastor Dakota, over Pastor Ro, God. I pray over Pastor Andrew in the name of Jesus, God. God, I just thank you for them, Lord God. And pray protection over them, Lord God. I pray for all the children, Lord God. I pray for everyone that's here, Lord God. I just thank you, Father God. I thank you, Lord God. I pray over the the teachers, Lord God, right now, Father God, and all the schools, Lord God. Lord, that God, you are raising a generation, Father God, that are people that are not ashamed of your gospel, Lord, but that will stand up and stand for Christ, Lord God. God, I pray for all the everyone that's going to vote, Lord God. I pray for all the presidency, Lord God, right now, God, and everyone that's in office, Lord God. That God, that you give us wisdom, Father God, on our voting, Lord God. And that we trust, Lord, whoever that's in office, Lord. In the name of Jesus, God, I thank you, Father God. Glory to you, Lord. 
glory to you, Lord. Thank you so much for Jesus Christ who came to break the power of the enemy who held the, the power of death. The devil cannot conquer Fresno anymore because God, the Holy Spirit, is, is at work and want to deliver many men and women in the valley, including Clovis and, and Fresno. We thank you, Jesus Christ, who came in order to help us overcome every temptation. We thank you, Lord, because you are merciful. You are our high priest. Thank you so much, Lord, for interceding for, for Fresno, for California. Because of your blood shed on the cross, there's a healing not only in our body, there's a healing of our soul. Thank you for transferring us from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light, the kingdom of sun, the sun, the kingdom of Jesus Christ. Because of your suffering on the cross, because of your blood shed on the cross, when we are tempted, we can cry out to you. You are able to help us. Thank you, Lord, for helping many men and women in Fresno this tonight and this weekend that to accept you as Lord and Savior. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Ladies, we have a women's retreat that's going to be happening in August. I believe it's August the 16th through the 18th. Is that correct? And so if you guys are interested, um, you can see Rebecca. She'll have more information about that. Um, so I love you guys and hope to see you all next week. Good night. <laughs>